On this week's GTA 6 O'Clock, T-Pain confirmed for GTA 6. What does Rockstar's lead writer leaving mean for the story? And when will we see Trailer 2? It's all here on this week's GTA 6 O'Clock. Hello and welcome to episode 8 of GTA 6 O'Clock. It has been eight weeks or like two months since trailer one so it's about time we start looking forward to when the next content drop is going to be i'm james uh, and joining me to discuss this and more is dan good day to you hello dan yes so two months since trailer one a couple of things to discuss this week First of all, we're going to jump back to cover some points from last week's map episode. So thanks to everyone who got in touch about that. Thanks to everyone who watched it. You can get in touch with us on Twitter is probably the easiest way or put a comment below. Twitter is at GTA V O'Clock. Comment below if you've got anything you want to shout to us about. First up, Dan, the toll bridges. Lots of people, including Kyle, it's Stevie Boy, Matty, 96 got in touch to say GTA 4 had toll bridges. They were always fun and a quick way to get a wanted level. Uh, Matty in GTA 4, there were two toll bridges you need to pay $5 to get through and you do get a one star rated level if you go through the barrier and don't pay. Mark says there was a toll bridge in GTA 4. So, yes, there was a toll bridge in GTA 4. What I've done here <laughs> is used my subconscious memories of GTA 4 and turned it into something that... Uh, I decided that I'd invented, whereas in fact I had not. Yeah, it was a latent memory that came back to haunt you. I had completely forgotten. I guess in the big scheme of GTA 4, my takeaway wouldn't be, good grief, do you remember that amazing scene where I paid $5 to cross the toll bridge? Or I didn't and I got a one-star wanted level. So thank you to everyone in comments who pointed that out. Uh, really good note. And as James says, I think he's uh, manifested that into being from latent memories. Yeah, there aren't any original ideas anymore. So you just, you know, dress up old <laughs> ones and pretend that they're yours and make them new. That's, that's what I've done. Um, so, yes, um, thanks to everyone who pointed that out. Also, um, Jake uh, and Kyle Stanton got in touch about the toll booth as well, saying that they think they're going to add an easy pass type of system for the toll booths. Um, those of us who don't live in Florida, it's like an electronic device that you stick to your windshield and it's a prepay thing. So as you approach as you approach the toll booth scanners, it just scans it, takes some money out of your account, so you don't have to carry cash around. Now they say, and I think we'll be able to put this image up on screen, that you can actually see a logo uh, in one of the trailer shots of something that looks a little bit like in Florida they call it the Sun Pass. It looks a bit like that on one of the signs. So it could be that there is going to be a Sun Pass system in GTA 6, much in the same way that it is in real life. Yeah, I mean, great. I mean, I don't think this is the reason people will buy GTA 6. What? Uh, yeah, no, call me a crazy person. Uh, I feel as excited about this as I might do a realistic implementation of the ULES system that currently runs outside London, which is an absolute mind-bending nightmare as you approach the, the city and yes. work out whether your car is going to get fined or not. So please, Rockstar, keep this to the fringes. But uh, a little bit of realism done in a fun way. Yes, please. That's good. I think that's the kind of thing that could be in here and would very much fit into the real world setting and, and all of the things that are going on. Uh, we know, as we said last week, that there is Apple Pay in the game. Yeah. This is just like an extension of that. And I think it could very much be uh, driven over the bridge. You have to pay $5 of your money. And that's that's Fruit Pay, Apple's lawyers, should you be listening, of course. All, yes. all likenesses are completely accidental. One a couple of other things to pick up on, actually. Um, William Ho and The Real Waz uh, said that actually, when we were talking about the nightclubs and strip yep. clubs, at the start of the trailer, obviously, we forgot to mention this, can't believe we forgot to mention this, there's the plane that flies across the beach uh, with the big banner on it <laughs> that says... Uh, a plane with a banner and we didn't notice it. <laughs> might as well have plane. crashed into us. Uh, it says, why 69 when you can 919? Yeah. Which is... I would suggest, and I think most other people have suggested, a reference to the Club 11. Yeah. Because it's got the ones in it. It's the same kind of thing. Now, the interesting thing with this is uh, that it's Y69 when you can 919. Like, it, 11 is not a strip club. 
that's the other club that is we've seen in the trailer like yeah. which uh is called we think the king of diamonds in real life which is now shut down um so why would they be saying that about a different club that is from a different genre it's basically why go to a strip club and you can dance like it feels weird so speculation hat on dan you ready yeah what if there is a battle going on for consumers for customers in the nightlife you know the nighttime city kind of thing could this hint towards the choices that you might get in game so we know that property ownership is a thing in vice city right you could own the club yeah gt online you can own multiple yeah. businesses what if this is a hint towards part of the game where you have to choose between the nightclub and strip club ownership, which then possibly opens up new missions but locks other ones off, gives you a version of your Vice City that makes your playthrough more unique than other people's by giving not game-changing branching choices, but enough to go, oh, you own the dance club, therefore you get to see a, you know this cutscene from the DJ or whatever. Yeah, I really like that. I mean, it aligns with the mechanics from GTA Online, which has often felt a bit more cosmetic, but I think something that would notionally allow you to play the light or dark path of capitalism would be quite interesting. Uh, whether that's, you know, I would rather run a really sordid strip club than uh, an exciting bar that attracts cool DJs. Uh, that's quite a cool element, as long as I think it doesn't completely corrupt the flow of the game. I, I think that would be fun and probably a continuation of... There was there was choices to be made in GTA 4, which perhaps felt more consequential than they really were. But I, I think that the first time you were confronted with those in GTA 4, it felt big. Mm -hmm. And it really was like, oh, my God, who do I kill? Um, that, that felt big, right? And I think if they can do something like that that suffuses all the way through GTA 6, great. Makes it a bit more interesting. Yeah, and that obviously the ultimate choice in GTA 5, where you, you know, have to choose one of the main protagonists to kill or not. Yeah. Uh, obviously, one of those, only one of those endings is canon, uh, but it is still a choice, and you could see them developing that a bit further into six with something like this, I would imagine. Do you ever choose, like a matter of interest, do you ever choose the hashtag bad ending? Me personally? Yeah. Are you, well, do, you, do you play the bad timeline, or do you prefer to go, what's the, the right answer? Well... I mean, you could probably work it out at the time, but I, I don't think it explicitly said this was the bad choice, right? It was just, yeah, I suppose. you just decided. Uh, normally, though, in like other games, no. Normally play like quite the straight yeah, good same, guy. Same. <laughs> like, so don't like killing nice people. No, and I guess in games you always think, who wants to live in the murkiest version of reality? And I guess what, what games probably haven't done is make being a really bad person sufficiently attractive mm. whether that's through powers and or, well, like real life power <laughs> money power and money but you are ultimately scandalised it would be interesting were GTA 6 to lean more into that and go you will have riches beyond anything you can imagine and this would feed interestingly into their role play activity where there's a moral element to how you play the game. I, by, by the way, I'm not saying this is going to, you know, people are probably touching and going, this sounds terrible. I've got to pay toll booths and make moral decisions. GTA 6 won't be anything like that. It would be super fun. But I think having these layers for people who want to engage with it makes it more interesting. I totally agree. Um, there's a couple of things. Well, one, the one extra thing from last week is that when we were talking about the, the prison and who Lucia was talking to, and we said they were correction officers. Of course they're not correction officers. They are the cops inside the jail watching the prisoners. Uh, it's obviously the parole officer or a counsellor that Lucia was talking to there. So thank you, uh, GTA for Life, for correcting us on that. We are stupid. Right, Dan, on to a couple of news pieces for this week. Uh, this actually came out last week, but we were obsessed by talking about the map, so we didn't quite get to it. But it has been revealed that T-Pain is going to be in GTA 6. Uh, he did this on stream, I believe. There's a TikTok that you can find of him talking about it. We might be able to put it up now, actually, Producer Nathan. Let's, uh, let's run the clip. Oh, I need to be on no pixel RP. I used to be. I used to be. And then... How about this shit? I used to be on no pixel. Then I started working on the fucking on GTA six and they told me I couldn't do RP anymore because it kind of goes against shit. They had this whole speech like 
you know, like what if somebody took your album and re-recorded it and more people were listening to that? Then I'm like, okay, I kind of get that, but I was having a good time. All right, that's fine. Then I start working on the, working on the game with them. And then, uh, then they teamed up with the people that, that kind of like make the RP shit. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. What? Whoa. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, bitch, shit. Y'all told me I couldn't do this shit and y'all teamed up with the people that make the that enable the RP shit to happen. Anyways, whatever. Um So yeah, that's T Pain there discussing uh GTA six and how he is involved with it. He's best known for his R and B stardom throughout the two thousands. Uh he was on the iconic song Low, you know, that one with the boots with the fur. Oh, is that the the official soundtrack of uh, the World Limbo Championships? Get low. Uh, sure. No. <laughs> Different song. <laughs> but, but maybe. Um, and him talking about his involvement with No Pixel. Now, No Pixel is the GTA 5 role playing server yeah. that has been uh, developed by a lot of a lot of people and contributors. It's run on a third party multiplayer server system called 5M, which we briefly talked about in one yeah. of the. One of the early episodes, early actually. Early episodes. Yep. It's got custom scripts uh, in there, and the idea is to role play, act, talk, and proceed as the characters that you're playing. Uh, this means that everything you do in there is basically on behalf of your character to create an immersive experience where you can see new stories and experiences unfold. They have a trailer for their latest update, uh, No Pixel 4.0, which goes into all the details, very worth having a look at that if you're not quite sure about it um, and seeing what kind of thing you could jump into. But yeah, T-Pain used to play on that version of the game and now obviously isn't allowed. But I guess the big question here is how do you think, if he is in the game and he's still in the game when it comes out, how do you think he's going to appear in it, Dan? Do you think it will be him playing himself? Do you think he'll be a parody of himself or somebody else? Or could it just be that he's like, a radio host uh, on, on one of the stations or the other option could he be in a nightclub or a performer you know like we saw when you know Ricky Gervais turned up in GTA 4 could it be that kind of thing where he's just in it at a certain time and you can just go and watch him do something yeah and in as much as I can embellish it I think you've sort of answered the question through the relaying of it because it could be any of those things and I'm trying to think in rock stars history i feel like they've done it all sorts of different ways mm. um they they've had people do uh, like official cameos and like be officially part of the game and or the soundtrack uh that to me feels like what you would do like you've got the name why not you know make it official and make it feel more rooted in the real world equally he could be anonymously voicing a character who happens to be exceedingly like t-pain irl um i i don't know which way this will lean to be quite honest with you and the other big piece of speculation around this then or things that we can speculate on at least is do you think that this is a controlled leak in the sense that it's not really a leak at all and it's part of a marketing strategy and is this part of the start of a rollout of confirming a few people like him on the fringes to just keep that news beat ticking over and keep GTA 6 in people's minds? This, I think, is a great question because I've always wondered the extent to which leaks are leaks or are they officially sanctioned and made to look like leaks in order to gain more traction. I've often pondered this about Ubisoft games, <laughs> not to name names, but... Because Ubisoft were the leakiest ship in the world, every single Assassin's Creed game seemed to leak three to four months early, yeah. usually on Kotaku. Now, whether that was because there was a contact within Ubi who had a contact at Kotaku and would just say something and that's how it worked, or had it got to the stage where Ubisoft had accepted that was an unofficial part of their strategy and the setting and character was going to leak early... I don't know. And I think actually this is something I think we could look at for another another episode is to actually speak to a PR professional or professionals and ask about their experience of does this sort of thing happen? Like are unofficial leaks officially part of their strategy? I think that would be an interesting conversation. I suspect, though, with a project of the size of GTA 6, 
the size of the project and the duration that it is in production for, you know, it's over a decade. When you work with that many people, and it's it's the same with the film, but even more so, thousands of people are working on GTA to keep them all to keep stum and, you know, abide to their NDAs is a massive undertaking. And I think people just get leaky. Or some people know the NDAs and just don't really care. Yeah. And they think I'm a bit bigger than this, whatever, I don't work with them again. It was fine to work with them once, I'm I'm done. So I don't know which side of this line this sits. I would say that what either way it's helpful because shows like ours have something to talk about. <laughs> and and in the absence of concrete information, which we'll get onto when we talk about when we expect the next trailer or screenshots, you know, history certainly around GTA five was that we we had nothing officially to talk about for, for like eight months plus, which was crazy. And we're only, like we said at the start, two months into the GTA six campaign. This is quite helpful for the oxygen of the GTA 6 ecosystem. So Rockstar might see it and go, eh, do you know what? It's fine. Yeah, uh, and I think that's the interesting thing is it has been left up, you know, and there are clips about it around. And normally if it's something that's, I guess, bigger or more impactful, it will, mm. it, you'll see it immediately get deleted or as, as deleted as you can. But that clip is pretty widely available. So it's either that they've decided, well, say what you want and you're not in the game anymore. Or it's in, insignificant enough for them to say, just leave it. And it looks worse now if we try and get it taken down because then there's a whole load of speculation around how big it was part was you playing. Or, like you say, it is part of a a wider, all right, you can tweet this on, you know, in January at some point, you next, you know, famous star, you can do something in February. Just don't tell us when you're doing it. Just do it and that's part of the thing who knows and this is this is the thing the minute you engage to say don't release this thing you're confirming it so this is why for rockstar they better to let things fly and you could even see when the trailer leaked there was a brief attempt to try and plug the leaky boat mm. it's just that i think about 10 minutes in they went nope this boat has a lot of holes we've just got to release the trailer and and they were forced to pivot strategy but i think the that was a magnitude of leak where they had to act, but then realised they couldn't stem the tide. Uh, it's a lot of nautical illusions here. But with this one, I think they think, well, whatever, you know, like it makes sense. It's not game breaking for anyone. Just let it be. OK, one more quick thing to mention before we get on to the big topic of trailer two or when we might see more content from GTA 6. And this is something that also happened uh, last year that we haven't covered yet, but we think it's worth talking about is the one of the lead GTA 6 writers left Rockstar in October last year. Uh, he used to work at Rockstar Games for 16 years. He's been the creative lead on all of your favorites, including uh, including GTA 6, but Red Dead 2, GTA 5, Max Payne, L.A. Noire, the original Red Dead, etc., etc. So he's been there a long time, but has now left the studio to go and work elsewhere. But Dan, what did you think that this means for the GTA 6 story? Like, is him leaving a indicator that the story is done? Yeah, possibly. What well, I've seen a few people in the GTA community talk about this. There's a chap called Michael Unsworth who started work at Rockstar uh, since 2007. In fact, his CV or his LinkedIn says he worked as senior creative writer from 2007 to 2019, which is quite a chunky 12 year stint and that would have taken him through all of the genesis of GTA 5 maybe Red Dead uh, certainly into a hefty chunk of the creation of GTA 6 and in fact then he got promoted at Rockstar to become writing director and uh, this is an amazing job title the vice president of writing Mm. Uh, that it blows my mind that such a job would exist. It's very but, American, but that. you know, there, but there we go. And you know, he's, he's very American, but within essentially the Scottish HQ yeah. of Rockstar North. So amazing. What it would say is he would have been at GTA Six at what we assume is the start of the project, probably anywhere between 2010s to 2013, 14, depending when they seriously got moving with this. Uh, now there was an interview with. Dan Hauser, you know, he used to be the big rock star head honcho, accredited with all of the writing. He did one with The Guardian after the release of GTA 5. He talked about the process of creating a game like GTA. Now, what he said was usually they would begin with the world and the setting. 
So that's kind of the first thing they would pick and they would let that settle and think about how that would dictate the mood and the vibe of what they were going to do and that would help them start building that world. The second thing would usually be characters because from characters you can get into motivations and mm -hmm. from motivations you need writing because then you need to lay out the bones of the script and what happens. Now it's, it's likely that the bones of GTA script and story would have been laid down. You know, it could have been anywhere in that gap between 2012 to even 2017, 18. I would be amazed if that if GTA 6 is still undergoing major rewrites. I'm sure they're tweaking missions, changing bits yeah. of scripting, yeah. and there's clearly writing work going on, and probably will be right up until the final, uh, you know, not the final day, but the the final stages of dev, right? But in terms of the core story. I would say it's probably done, right? Yeah. Now, the, what that would suggest is there's a guy who's old school rock star who worked with Dan Hauser, who would have been present through the GTA 6 process all the way through to brackets completion. So that for everyone who's worried that Dan Hauser's departure means the GTA that I knew is gone, I don't think that's as clear cut as you might think and of course where has uh, Michael Unsworth gone he's gone to work with Dan Hauser at his new launch Absurd Ventures yeah. so you may feel like I've done my piece GTA 6 done and in fact his LinkedIn credits his previous work which is like GTA uh, 5 Max Payne 3 LA Noir Red Dead Redemption GTA 4 and Grand Theft Auto 6 so he's saying he's, he's happy to put his name to that part of the CV so you know, let's wait and see how the actual tonality of the game is, but don't assume that Dan Houser's departure means this is a different game and it's gone a different direction or whatever. There's, there's some creative DNA throughout. Yeah, he totally would have written all of the key beats, like you say, from, you know, how the characters get from point A at the beginning of the story to point F at the end. Like, that kind of stuff will be pretty much nailed down. It's just the, the minor intricacies of... You know, story beats, mission structures, that kind of thing that's probably still being worked out. But yeah, so that's um, interesting that he has left, but I don't think significantly would impact anything to do with Six at this point. Okay, then it's time for the big question. Trailer 2, GTA 6 Trailer 2, when will it be released? Uh, and I think to get a good sense of this, we can look back at the history of some of other Rockstar's games, you yeah. know, like GTA 5 and that kind of thing. Where were their beats? How does it all translate? We can kick off with GTA 5, the one that we're most familiar with. Yeah. Um, the, and some of these things are, are mind-blowing that I had to go and check because the dates are ludicrous. But the first GTA 5 trailer was released 2nd of November 2011. So that was, you know, what, 13 years ago? Yeah, wow, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, When yeah, we yeah. were doing this yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's probably when uh, GTA 5 o'clock kicked off. Well, actually, it was before then, in fact, I think. Um, so that trailer came out, had no release date on it. It was then another eight months until we got two screenshots of GTA 5, which was in uh, the 12th of July, 2012. And there was the then another month, so nine months since trailer one, where we got some more screenshots and more drops throughout of that month, actually. Like August 2012 yeah. was quite big for GTA 5 screenshots. A year on the 5th of November was a trailer two announcement of when the date, well, you know, trailer mm -hmm. two's going to drop mm -hmm. on this date. Uh, and then it actually dropped on November 14th. Uh, so basically a year pretty much exactly a year since the first trailer was when we got trailer two. That's also when we got some previews and screens of GTA 5 when certain outlets were allowed to go and see a very thin vertical slice of the game. Yep. If I remember rightly, it was the uh, FIB tower. Uh, it was not a heist, but there was a helicopter. People were re rappelling down the sides of the buildings and smashing through the windows. You can see a bit of that uh, mission in the trailer I think that they released but it was basically a the trailer was a reflection of the previews yeah uh, but so but yeah so that was a whole year after trailer one was how the GTA 5 timeline went uh, and then as we all know the game came out on the 17th of September 2013 so that's the history of the GTA 5 
uh, media drops. There were some other bits and bobs in between there and after those dates, but those are the significant ones I think are worth looking at. We could then look at Red Dead 2, the first trailer for Red Dead 2, 20th of October 2016, which did actually have a fall 2017 release date on it. Mm-hmm. Again, seven months until the first screenshots, and then four months after that, trailer 2 came out on the 28th of September 2017. Uh, dating a spring 2018 release. So there's <laughs> 11 months between the trailers there, which so far, I will admit, is not boding well for content that we're going to get pretty soon about GTA V. However, there is a silver lining if we go all the way back to the GTA Four campaign, which I think if we are basing this on GTA Six, is going to come out in 2025 and in the March, you know, the January to March window that if we're going by Rockstar's financials and all of that kind of stuff. So if we're assuming that it's going to come out in March, the GTA 4 structure of Beats seems to fit better. So they had their first trailer on the 29th of March 2007. It had no release date at all, not even a year on it, like just nothing. It was just a trailer for GTA 4. Some screenshots came out at the same time which were pretty much uh, reflective of the trailer, which makes me a little surprised that they didn't do this for GTA 6. Like, there's enough screenshotable things in that trailer or like slight variations of it that could have been released as screenshots, but we didn't get any. I mean, essentially we have got screenshots because you take screenshots of every single shot of the trailer, uh, but as we know, they're not quite in-game shots. They're a little bit more staged and stuff, so maybe that's why they didn't come out. Following on from that, it's three months until Trailer 2, which came out uh, in the, on the 28th of June 2007. Still no date on it at all. Four months later, in Ju- on July 25th, we get the first previews of GTA 4. And then nine months from the release of the original trailer there's trailer three still no date and then one year after the release of the first trailer we get trailer four which was on march the 28th 2008 where it finally dates the game for april the 29th of that year Uh, and then it did come out on april the 29th of that year 2008 so that is a short condensed timeline of releases there it's basically quite a few trailers, quite a few regular content drops, previews in the middle of it, and a year from trailer one coming out to the game launch, a year and a bit, which if we put that into the release calendar of GTA 6 Mm. would follow a similar pattern on such a condensed timeline that if they are in fact still targeting March 2025. Yeah, assuming that they want to slot it within that fiscal year, which is their most important internal uh, deadline or milestone essentially Uh, what I would say about all of this is and it is fascinating to see how they've done it before I feel like much like stock market analysis uh, past performance does not indicate the future correct Um, not but that's but except when it does because sometimes (laughs) things happen again and it looks like a pattern Um, and I think there are bits of this we can take the overlay I would put onto all of this that I think is fascinating particularly when looking back at GTA Four. This will catch you on the hot, but I, I was fascinated as I was Googling it. When the GTA 4 trailer was first released in March 2007, do you know how old YouTube was? <laughs> do I? Uh, I didn't YouTube start around the early 2000s. Yeah, now I don't want to catch you on the hot because I wouldn't have known either. So this blows my mind. YouTube officially launched on December the 15th, 2005. So that means the GTA 4 trailer, YouTube was less than two years old Mm. when it came out. What? Like that blows my head off. And the world of 2007, and I I know because I'm that old that I work through it. This was a world still dominated by magazines where the web was the emerging renegade medium. You work for a website, whoa, you know. Uh, The way information was disseminated was entirely different. And I think what would happen then is there would be these big, chunky 
trailers, everyone would see them, but they would be like given out to the press to disseminate the information first. There was not the ecosystem of social media fan accounts. You yeah, know, even Reddit's were a different beast back then, and the, and the structure for delivering Reddit's. I mean, you know, and again to contextualise it, without being too self-aggrandizing, GTA Five O'Clock was one of the first solo game successful shows on the entire internet, right? And that was 2012. Like yeah. We pioneered this format that everyone does now for lots of games, right? That was the thing we did back then. That, you know, it's, now it's over a decade old. So you know, will Rockstar be able to follow these patterns is a question mark because the way media is reported has changed. Will they do things like it's a new trailer alongside an exclusive press invite? They might well do, and I hope they do because I'd like to go and see it, please, Rockstar. <laughs> But what they could also do, or do they open it up to a way where they go, 50 influencers have seen it, or we've got all these people to remix these different things. It will be unlike any way they've ever operated before, but in the new world, they have different options available to them, which could change the paradigm of what we'd seen in the past. But will they? I don't know. I don't know. And I, I also think the more they expose themselves to the world of influencers, social media, I guess one-off creators who they may have less of a relationship and or a holdover, essentially. Yeah. Um, it's risky for them. because yeah, these people, people want can, those clicks, right? Yeah, and they can say any old shit, right, to get the clicks. And I think that's dangerous for Rockstar. So I, I get the impression, and this is the way the company has always been, they like to, like, there's a term about, you know, you sell the sizzle, not the sausage, where... Everyone wants the smell of the sausage and the sizzle. They don't want to know how a sausage is made because it's really depressing and not that exciting. So Rockstar don't often like to talk about the process and to get deep into it. They like the mystique of this thing dropping out of the sky and everyone just going, whoa, look at this thing, behold the thing. The more people, you know, atomize it, give up secrets and kind of ruin it and saturate it, it's less special. Mm -hmm. So I think Rockstar will want to retain a little bit of that. So, sorry, that's a very long-winded way of saying... Um, we can take some indications from this brilliant, uh, you know, timeline investigation work, but how will it be de-delivered? I don't know. The other overlay is Rockstar don't even control their own timeline. They haven't controlled any of the GTA 6 timeline because it's all been leaked for them. Yeah. What if trailer 2 gets leaked? Well, I'm imagining they're going to have a very different approach oh. <laughs> to how they do trailer 2 as the way they did trailer 1. But, I mean, that sort of ties into, like you mentioned with GTA 4, like back then and how the world of the media has changed. Like back then, the trailers were, you know, they would be hosted on Rockstar's sites. It's like, yeah. you know, you have to go to their website to watch it. It wasn't put across all of... I mean, it was obviously put across yes. YouTube and all yeah. that stuff. But the main point of the call was like, oh, go to rockstargamescom slash GTA 4 and you'll get to watch the trailer. That's where you can download it. That's where yeah. you can get all that stuff from. It, it could be that they go back to a way of going, the only way to control this not leaking is to put it on our own media platforms, like our own websites and get people to come there the problem with that is as we saw as soon as it gets released you know you only have to look at the youtube numbers they've got a hundred million people trying to access their website it's likely it's going to fall over and the servers won't be able yeah. to cope with doing yeah. all that stuff so yeah. it's a it's a chicken and egg thing like wait what do they do i think what they do is they just upload the trailer privately don't put it as a youtube premiere and then just flick the switch and then it just goes out you know, when they're saying, hey, it's five o'clock today, it'll be on our YouTube channel. You just then flick it manually. Yeah. Rather if, than if I was at Rockstar, I would put the trailer on a C, not a CD, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I would have it on some kind of physical device that can only be a suitcase that can only be open with my own blood. So Sam Hauser has to give his eye DNA and blood and then he, he presses it live two minutes before the thing. How else can they prevent leaks? But I think you're actually right. They just were a little bit. They probably have... Um, taken some learnings from the way the GTA 6 trailer was disseminated yeah. and won't be doing that again. No, I don't think they will. Um, so yeah, all in all, if we look at the release dates of GTA 4 and how it might relate to GTA 6, given all the things we've already discussed, yep. if, if they're going on a similar timeline, the GTA 6 trailer was released on December 4th, put all of our algorithms into the machine, <laughs> three months it was from the GTA 4 trailer 1 to trailer 2. So three months from now, 
is about 40 days away at the time that this show is going out, March the 4th-ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, when that's when we may get trailer two or some screenshot drops or something else to keep the train rolling down the tracks. If there is a trailer, I don't think it's going to have a date on it. I think it would still say 2025. I don't want to commit to anything too early. There'll be more non-gameplay-like clips, so it'll be very much like trailer one, some lead characters saying some things in what could or you know could be cutscenes, very stylized shots, that kind of thing. Could it be combined with a short vertical slice or like hands-off previews for selected members of the press? Yes, the timeline would fit. You know, as a first look, if we get to March and it's releasing twelve in twelve months' time from that date, it makes your window for doing if you want to do any kind of previews and then another trailer and then some screenshots, there isn't a lot of time in between all the other major beats of the year. Then you know, like Gamescom, you're going to have Summer Game Fest. And there are a lot of things going on where you can only pick certain months. It does quite restrict that timeline down. If, if, if they are still targeting some time between January and March yeah. 2025 yeah. and Same internally way. they're listening to this going <laughs> the fools we're not going to release it until yeah. October November we've got ages it's also an interesting question of if they do do a big bang press play test will the press be given access to what's like classically the single player game or is it so intrinsically bound to the multiplayer now that they're indecipherable and you have to do all at once because you know once upon a time it was he was a slice of the single player here is how multiplayer works here is how gta online works they were very separate demos mm. and presentations are they now just so entangled that you have to do it all together i don't know and in which case that feels like it would all come very very late yeah because to have like the servers and the integration and the testing and everything the game's got to be pretty far along to feel like i think they could expose that to people and in fact the original gta online uh, release and testing was like post the game the entirely separate game. yeah yeah so like i don't i don't think it, i think it would all go hand in hand this time around it might be a, sl- a slight delay in one getting up and running it depends on how much stock they're still giving to preserving the single player experience we don't know yet i just think ultimately a month after release they will be utterly enmeshed and you know this will all be out and live um but yeah i can see basically quarterly official somethings between now and what we assume is like a well i think probably like a march 2025 release barring it being delayed Mm -hmm. and you, you could look at the history of the trailers and say one of the official trailer beats is the it's been delayed trailer yeah so you could almost build in when's the it's being delayed trailer getting dropped yeah (laughs) <laughs> and, and that, but that would be, I think, closer to release. So <laughs> towards the end of this year, you'd get a, oh, we need some more polishing time. We're pushing it back to summer or something. Or yeah, to, you know, a bit. Later. And these things normally bounce on what six to twelve months. So like, I think if it is getting delayed, we'll probably know in the sort of classic autumn winter period this year. I think then we'll be, our thoughts will be recalibrated from then. Uh, I mean, look, what I will say is. I just I would like them to give us a little bit more to go on uh, rather than perhaps a leaky leaky stuff of T-Pain sounding off and, <laughs> uh, you know, giving things up. But the community, it's a cat and mouse game where the community is so rabid, including shows like ours, where we, we you know, we don't struggle to fill an episode of GTA 6 o'clock. And Rockstar have said officially nothing for two months. Yeah. And there's so many other threads that we can talk down that are fascinating. So what a brilliant position to be in for them where you don't have to do anything and you're getting all this great PR from such wonderful minds as ours <laughs> well if, that, if that's not a plug I don't know what <laughs> is so tell all your friends please everybody um, so yeah there you go you heard it here first March uh, 2025 no March 2024 is yeah. when we will get the next content drop from yeah, GTA 6 asterisk. if we don't get it we'll come back to this and, and do a little analysis of how wrong we were yeah. uh, but for now Uh, I think that about wraps up this week's show. Thank you all for listening. Please, if you have any questions or comments, put them below in the comment section. We will read them all, read out the interesting ones next week and uh, debate them between ourselves. Uh, Thanks for listening. We should mention we are on 
Apple Podcasts and Spotify now. The feed seems a little bit delayed. We're going to get that pumped back through, so you should all get should get these episodes on those platforms as well. Uh, but we are always here on YouTube at 6 o'clock on Wednesdays. So until next week, we will say goodbye, and we will see you next Wednesday at 6 o'clock for another episode of GTA 6 o'clock. Bye.